Now that we've learned about uh, creating aesthetics for insertion of plants in the previous video, now we're going to look at creating individual plant symbols with data about the plant attached to them. So again, underneath the plant tool, uh, we've looked at the different insertion modes and the plant tool preferences. Um, next, you'll see there's a drop down here uh, with a plant in it that's just come in by default. If you look through your Vectorworks libraries, depending on which version you're running, it might bring up some different folders here for you. Some of them just are symbols with no plant information attached to them. And then some are plants that are supposed to rep represent a particular genus, species, maybe even cultivar, and have a drawing, and then have information about that plant filled out already. So you could just use the ones out of the database here, but you might find that you there isn't what you want in there, in which case you're going to have to create your own. So your two methods are to either draw a shape representing your plant in the screen and then creating a new plant, or you could use one of these standard symbols and then attach some plant data to it next. So method we're going to use to get started is uh, drawing something, which is probably more illuminating. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the circle tool and I'm going to draw a circle of any shape. This will get automatically resized for us later. And I'm just going to turn the fill off for now, uh, as if we were just getting ready for a planting plan. While I have this selected, if I come up to Landmark and down to Create New Plant, uh, I'll get this dialog box that comes up. So when I select Create New Plant, it's turning it into uh, a Vectorworks symbol, but specifically a symbol that can be used for plants. Now. Some of this information we have to manually fill out and some of it we can hopefully find in one of the databases that the Vectorworks already has. So if you hit get plant data over here, first time that you open this, it's gonna ask you where you want that to go. And I think user folder is sensible. So I'm gonna go okay. And it's gonna get the, um, the databases ready for you. Now, there's two systems that it uses to put these in. I think this is a Microsoft Access database here, um, which is very handy for searching and other things, but we're not gonna talk about it just yet in this video. What we're gonna do here is just minimize that, and you're gonna come to Select Plant Data, and it brings up this just text-based uh, database. If you come up to the top, you see it's set to annuals and biannuals by default. If you come down to plant list all, it'll look through all of the plants that are in the database for you. And now you'll be able to search within that. So let's wait for that to happen. Once this uh, is all loaded, we're gonna use this search area here. So you're probably gonna be searching by the botanical name most probably. Uh, so I can come here and I can find something that's in the list and choose it. And you can see that it's already got all of this data about the plant filled out and it may be appropriate to where you are and it may be uh, a little bit misleading, but you can change that as well. So I'm gonna hit okay. And what it's done is it's brought some of this data back in. You can't tell in this screen, but if we go to this one, you can see it's brought in the botanical name, the common name, and down in this plant data, it's brought in a lot of information that's been filled out as well. Now that we've brought some of this data in, we're also going to look at uh, what else we need to fill out ourselves. So let's start in the first tab and we'll actually start right up the top here. Plant symbol name. This is uh, how you're going to file this away in your system. It's not going to appear on any of your plants once you drop them in your project, but it is the way that you sort these out to find them, to put them in. So I'm going to use the botanical name for this so I can just copy it from here. You might find that you split your plants up over multiple files or you have like a 
prefix of T for trees before them so it's easier to find things. You'll have to work that out over time as you get more into this program, but for now that will do. Next here in the first tab, we've got insertion options and you'll notice that it's saying a number here, but it's saying a different spread here. So this one's in meters and this is in millimeters because I've got the Vectorworks preferences set up that we work in millimeters. This is coincidentally within that range. However, it's merely because I drew a circle that was 5,826 millimeters inside in size. So this might give you a clue about what size you want to draw it. It's up to you what you want to draw it at. Uh, where I am, it's a bit of a convention to draw trees at around 75 to 80% of their eventual growth or maybe projecting out a certain amount of years into their life rather than full size. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this at say 5,500 because it's going to get to that fairly quickly. Um, I can also set the height, which is something I might want to get out of my schedule later. It might even going be something that uh, I want attached for my three dimensional uh, instance of this plant. Uh, a lot of you will just be working in 2D though, and it won't be terribly helpful for you. Whereas this spread, it'll actually change the size of the circle, um, how it's drawn in my project. All right, next one, spacing. So you have a few different options in here. Fixed spacing makes you uh, apply exactly what you want it to be. And for this, uh, we can use it so that we get this overlapping of plants. For that to work, you've got to make sure that the spacing is smaller than the spread. So I might set this at 5,000 and uh, then I should have 500 mil of overlap between my two plants. I could also use these two different settings here as well so that it will fudge those um, results a little bit to make it a bit cleaner. This here is if you're going to be using the hedging tool, so we can uh, set that up as well. Uh, let's call these advanced use and we'd come back to those at a later time. This would be as if you're using this landscape area tool. Next under schedule, it's already filled out our Latin name and our common name. This plant tag ID is probably the most important one to remember. This is the abbreviation that appears here. Um, everyone has their own conventions for this. I, I use a uppercase for the genus and then I use three lowercase for the species or if there's also a cultivar attached then I'll put that in as well. So I might go I N and then uh, single quotation marks and N for Natchez. Um, I keep them short so that the text fits in here, but I don't keep them too short so that I don't have duplicates within my database. You'll, you'll find out later on that you can only have one uh, uh, use of these, this string of text and same with this plant symbol name in your database or otherwise um, it'll tell you there are duplicates. That's a problem. You need to change something. Having it at this length sort of jogs your mind about what the plant is as well. If you, if you have them any shorter, you have to keep looking between your, your planting schedule and your plan to remember what you've popped in. And it's trickier for the construction team as well. Scheduled size is the, the pot size or bag size that you want to procure it at. And I, I like to fill these out later all in one hit in the schedule. Uh, let's leave this as count as the standard and go to the next tab. So in the previous video, you will have noticed that I set defaults for how things would be rendered so that all my plants that got popped in would um, have these settings already applied to it. So we're gonna skip that one. And here in plant data, you see most things are filled out. The, the probably the most critical one within plant data is this category one here. Um, if you used a schedule later on that uh, looked up your plants by categories. So you might have it that it shows 
uh, trees and shrubs and grasses in different categories, then if this isn't filled out, it won't find your plants. But we'll, we'll talk about this again when we do planting schedules. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK and we've filled out this information and it's updated the database and you'll notice that it hasn't automatically put a tag on for us so it's updated this plant for me but it won't set up it won't introduce our tag and cross in the same way that our uh, other plants have until I actually use the insertion tool to put it in so if I come to plant find this plant in my list so this name is that first name that we put in up the top and double click. I can now drop this in and it will have the tag and the cross on it now and my text will fit in there just nicely. Now, once you've made a plant, you may want to edit some of that data that's in there. To do this, one of the easy ways to do it is to double click on the plant with your cursor tool on and select definition down here. 2D graphic is about the line work and definition is all that data that we've just gone to the effort of filling out. So now you could come back in and make changes and that would make changes to every cluster of this plant that you have in your project, not just that one that you double clicked on. Another way to get there also would be to come up to your resource manager, select the project that you're currently working on here and then find your plant within that area, right click and uh, edit the definition here. If we go again and double click and go edit 2D graphic, what this allows us to do is to change the visualizations within here. And we'll talk about some of the more advanced things for that later. You might simply want to come and change the line weights in your attributions, attributes panel. You could also change the 3D graphic, which we're not going to cover in this uh, set of videos and the path. So the path is the the polyline that you've drawn within here. You'd be able to move or add vertexes, um, change the mode that it was drawn within and lots of different things. But the main one you're going to use is this move mode to just move the plants around and also the addition or minus to remove a plant or add a plant into that group. It's often quicker to redraw plants rather than um, edit them, I would say. Another way to create a plant would be to come to your resource manager, select your file and duplicate one of the plants that you have in there. You have to have a new name so you could set that up now and go OK. You could double click it so that you're able to drop it in. Then you could select your cursor tool, double click and edit the definition. In here you could change it so it's the plant that you want. You could go back and get plant data again like um, we did the first time. Yet another way to make a new plant is to go to your planting preferences tool. Come up and select this definition tab and here you could select something that you've already got in your project and then, sorry, double click and then hit the duplicate button to create a new version of it and you'd go through and put in your new settings here. This time we're going to create a plant and we're going to grab the data from the Vectorworks database. So I'm going to select my circle tool again. I'm going to draw a circle and I'm going to go to landmark and create a new plant. From here I'm going to get select get plant data and this time I'm going to leave this um, window maximized and I'm going to use this to find something that I want. So you can see up here there's 2000 records roughly. 
There's also a Find button over here, so I can hit that. And now each of these fields in here are searchable. So I might select the um, climate that I've got. I might decide that I want it to be uh, frost tolerant, and then I might come up and hit perform find. And now you can see it's narrowed that 2,260 plants down to 205. I could keep adding more uh, restrictions on uh, doing another search, or I could uh, thumb through these different records until I find something that I like. And then I can come up to Vectorworks and go used currently selected record. And what it's done is it's brought the data back in about the plant from the Vectorworks data place, database rather than that uh, secondary select plant data thing that we used the first time. And you'll notice it's filled out a lot of the information again, uh, uh, but there's still things that I would need to go and fill out. So uh, that is attaching data to a plant symbol. Uh, we're going to look at some further things in the next videos like creating plant schedules and fine-tuning things.